Daniel. We can pray that God would plant us on higher ground. Who was it that said, when they go low, we go high? Let's stay on the high ground. The series that we're under right now, Songs of Our Souls, and you might notice there's some singing in today's service, lots of singing, and something that God has just placed on my heart as well to share before I, uh, kind of as a pre-message to the message. There's a song that says, we are often destitute of the things that life demands. Want of food and want of shelter, thirsty hills and barren lands. In our God, our trust assured and according to the word, we'll understand it better by and by. So I'm encouraged that by and by, oh, when the morning comes, all the saints of God will gather in home. We will tell, tell the story how we've overcome and we'll understand it better by and by. And we will, and not just some sweet by and by, in tomorrow, in tomorrow's tomorrow. That our by and by can be in the next minute, can be in the next moment. So let us pray. Thank you, God, for those moments. Thank you for the songs of our hearts. Thank you for all that you have provided as Jehovah Jireh. We pray in your many names. Amen. The writer of the book of Hebrews tells us that the threads of faith are woven throughout the blanket of time by expert weavers of faith. So what exactly is faith? Certainly one place to start is the Oxford Dif Dictionary definition which says, it is trust in somebody's ability or knowledge. Trust that somebody or something will do what has been promised. The Hebrews 11.1 1 definition of faith frames it in a religious and spiritual context. Here are the definitions from faith from seven different, several different translations. The reality of what we hope for. The proof of what we don't yet see. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things we don't see. The thing that gives substance to our hopes and makes certain of realities that we do not see. Faith, only faith, can guarantee the blessings that we hope for or prove the existence of the realities that at present remain unseen. Another says, Faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. And lastly, the final one says, faith is the confident assurance that what we hope for is waiting for us, even though we cannot see it just up ahead. The writer then goes on to give examples of people who were, in their estimation, in the hall of fame of faith. And we have the blessings and the examples to look at the actions of some of our heroes and sheroes of faith, to put them in our own somewhat hall of fame, if you will. Some are mentioned in Hebrews chapter 11, some are in our history books, and some are from our own lives. There are biblical figures like Sarah and Abraham, Rahab, that was mentioned, the prostitute Rahab, although we might be able to Remember her as something other than a prostitute. The faithful Rahab. The informant Rahab. The one who helped to bring down the walls of Jericho, Rahab. The ones who helped to save the children of Israel, Rahab. In addition to being a prostitute. David. King David. Moses, who helped the people of Israel leave their enslavement, or people in history like Gandhi, or Mother Teresa, or Martin Luther King, 
Mary McLeod Bethune, Malala Yousafzai, or even people from our families. And that's for you to fill in the people from your family, the people of faith. Whatever their accomplishments because of their faith, one thing that all of these people have in common is their humanity. While they strove for something better, they were flawed and scarred individuals just as we are in some ways. And yet they, like we, can be strong persons of faith, spirit, and justice in the midst of everything that faces us. What is your reality about being a person of faith? In the Gospels, it is said that Jesus said, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here, from here to there, and it will be moved. Nothing will be impossible for you. Nothing will be impossible. Yet he didn't say that nothing would be difficult. Nothing wouldn't be difficult for you. And I do think about some of these other difficult circumstances for us as people of faith. We can pray that God keeps an individual from dying, and yet we can have the confident assurance that God is present with us and holding us in our hearts when that person dies. We can pray that God delivers us from a bad situation, and we can have faith that God is with us as we move to be responsible for our own lives and the lives of others. We can pray for wars to cease, and have the confident assurance that God will ultimately prevail over the consequences of human greed, lust for power, oppression, and misuse of authority. For some of us, the reality is, yes, life has its joyful times, its dancing times, its wonderful times, and for some of us, there can be excruciatingly difficult times as well. We hurt, we grieve, we cry. We dance, we hope, we dream, and we have faith through it all, which is that calm, confident assurance. Actually, that confident assurance. The calm assurance is from Blessed Assurance, my favorite hymn. We have that assurance that God is with us. There was a song that was first published in 1956, which according to the Episcopal Diocese of Washington State, became an immensely popular hymn, much to the surprise of its author, Albert A. Goodson. The lyrics affirm God's saving power in the past, as well as gives hope for the future. The message that with confidence in the Lord's help, we can go forward and we can face whatever lies ahead. This message is as enduring for us today, is as important for us today as it was in 1956 when it was written. This song has been a foundational staple of MCCDC throughout our own history. One verse says, don't be discouraged when trouble comes your way. God will bear all your burdens and will turn your night into day. And you may be more familiar with the chorus, which says, We've come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord, trusting in God's holy word. God's never failed us yet. Oh, can't turn around. We've come this far by faith. Let me help me. Oh, can't turn around. We've come this far by faith. Very good. Wonderful. This faith, this strongly held conviction that God will ultimately prevail has tangible results as well as tangible repercussions. Hebrews 11, 33 through 38 speaks further about these people of faith. Through faith, they conquered kingdoms. They brought about justice. They realized promises. They shut the mouths of lions. They put out raging fires.
They escaped from the edge of the sword. They found strength in weakness. They were mighty in war, and they routed armies. I pause that these people shut the mouths of lions. And in their day, the lions had furry manes and voracious fangs. And in our day, the lions look a little bit different. And through our faith, I do believe we can shut the mouths of lions that seek to rip us apart as a people of faith. Continuing in verse 35, Families received back their dead by resurrections. And another side of the story that says, others were tortured and refused to be released so that they could gain a better resurrection. But others experienced public torture by being taunted and whipped. They were even put in chains and in prison. They were stoned to death. They were cut in two. And they died by being murdered with swords. They went around wearing skins of sheep and goats, needy and oppressed and mistreated. The world did not deserve them. So you might say, well, gosh, Reverend Kathy, what are you talking about <laughs> that right now? Well, I see some parallels that come to mind for me. And I wonder, has your reputation or your position ever been maligned or stoned to death? with language from your detractors because your faith or your strongly held convictions were present and you spoke them. Have you ever been seeing the death of a dream, perhaps to have God open a door or God give you another dream to go through? Who or what do you have faith in? In this current reality in which we live, can you trust that God will provide and God will prevail? Like those heroes of faith, you can know that God is journeying with us. I believe songs of our souls and prayers are necessary parts of our spiritual development, our heart development, and our nourishment. And when the rubber of our spiritual sneakers meets the road of our desires to do better, to grow, to meet hardship, grief, and brokenness, we can continuously attend to our responses. We can move forward as individuals and as a community of faith. We can have faith that our God will provide and we can engage, get involved and active in ensuring that this community continues. We can share our church and our spiritual experiences with others, especially online. You can click that like button. You can click the share and share the service. You can put a chat in the comment box. Or, excuse me, you can put a comment in the chat box. We can go to the grocery store, to the coffee shop, or to the restaurant, and live out our values every day by simply being kind to one another. Those times that you do take your mask off, you can offer a smile to someone. There are some in the U.S. that have faith in persons or systems that incite violence against people they believe are not like them, who might have a different ideology or theology or worldview. The God of the understanding of some in our society is a vengeful, angry, condemning God. That worldview is interpreted and often carried out as angry, violent acts rather than peaceful, lawful voicing of differences. Many times the laws and scriptures are weaponized against those who are on the margins of many communities. What do we as a people of faith do when we are faced with these kinds of circumstances? We pray. We have faith in the God of our understanding. We act in ways that God places on our hearts individually and as community. We resist and we treat people with respect without objectification. I encourage us to educate ourselves on how to recognize and respond to and resist the things that tear us down. Things like microaggressions, horizontal racism, 
internalized and externalized homophobia and transphobia, internal and external oppression. And if any of these words are new to you, please contact me. I would love to talk to you about what they might mean. RevCathy at mccdc.com. There are yet others today who have lost faith in organized religion. They've been damned, burned, and othered from the pulpit to the pew. And they've determined to live their lives without organized religion. Others have determined that they are spiritual and not religious because the institution of church and religion have been hurtful or hard to understand. What can we do to offer an invitation to relationship with God and with community over a cup of coffee, over a meal? What's the impact of our faith on the community around us, our impact as a church and a people of faith? Are the hungry fed? Can people find a spiritual home to be respected just for themselves? Is there a place to be of service to God and use your spiritual gifts, your time, your talent, your treasure in community? What really happens when the community's efforts in faith shows up and shows out and are sustained over time? Something changes. MCCDC has been present as a faith community for over 51 years. And with your continued engagement in the ministries of MCCDC, God will use this community, each one of us, to preach a message of love and acceptance into the future. The entire book of Hebrews encourages us to take in our current reality and in faith balance it with the ultimate reality that God is going to prevail. That very message is intertwined in this next song. The Schmoop University Guide speaks of this idea. There's a bit of Booker T. Washington and W.E.B. Du Bois in this song. And it's entirely possible that the song has remained popular for over 100 years because it speaks to different ways of advocating for freedom. Steeped in religious expression, the song is a demand for faith. Aware of history, it invokes images of the past while at the same time acknowledging signs of progress into the future. It brings just the right mix of thinking, feeling, and remembering. And it suggests that people should be joyful yet angry, grateful for the changes that have occurred already, yet mindful of the struggle that is not yet over. You got it yet? Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring. Ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies. Let it resound loud as the rolling sea. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun of a new day begun, let us march on till victory is won. The last verse goes like this. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, thou who has brought us thus far on the way, thou who has by thy might led us into the light, keep us forever on the path we pray, lest our feet stray from the places, our God, where we met you, lest our hearts drunk with the wine of the world we forget you, Shadowed beneath your hand, may we forever stand, true to our God, true to our native land.
Do we trust that our God will provide what we need? Faith is the reality of what we hope for, the proof of what we do not yet see. The elders in the past were approved because they showed faith. We today can be in deep relationship with the God of our understanding and our community through engagement, our involvement, and our help of one another. Determine how you can best engage in community, with this community, with your community. This final contemporary song encourages us to know that God is Jaira, our provider, and God is engaged with relationship with us. We can count on God through our faith. I've never been more loved than I am right now. Wasn't holding you up, so there's nothing I can do to let you down. It doesn't take a trophy to make you proud. I've never been more loved than I am right now. Going through a storm and I won't go down. I hear your voice carried in the rhythm of the wind to call me out. You an ocean so I wouldn't drown you've never been closer than you are right now Tyra you are enough Jaira you are enough so I will be content in every circumstance, Jaira, you are enough, forever enough, always enough, you're more than enough, forever enough, always enough, you're more than don't want to forget how I feel right now. On the mountaintop, I can see so clear what it's all about. Stay by my side when the sun goes down. Don't want to forget how I feel right now. You are Jaira. God will be with you. God will provide for you. God is ever enough, always enough, forever enough. And God will journey with us wherever we find ourselves, through joy and through sorrows, through grief and through tribulations. God is with us. Amen and amen.